Hello beautiful souls and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Now we all know that February 14th is just a few days away. And however you celebrate it, one thing we all have in common are the tons and tons of pictures and videos we see on our timeline of people celebrating their love all around the world. Now I don't know about you, but seeing the little boys rushing off to school in the morning, gripping a chocolate rose in their hand to go give to their little girlfriends, well, it definitely gives me hope for humanity. I mean, how could you not feel good about that? Look at how cute this kid is. Today, we're going to talk about Valentine's Day, more specifically, the history behind it. Let's get into it. Valentine's Day takes place once per year on February 14th, and all around the planet, people celebrate it by going all out for their loved ones, planning expensive dates, or just giving them all the flowers and chocolate that their loved one desires. And all of this is done in the name of Saint Valentine. But who is this saint, and how did these traditions come to be? February has been celebrated as a month of romance for many, many years. It is said to contain traces of both Christian and ancient Rome traditions. But who was St. Valentine? And how did he become attached to this holiday? Fun fact, according to some sources, St. Valentine is actually a historical character who was said to have healed a child while in prison. Follow me into part two to learn all about St. Valentine. Welcome back to part two of the history behind Valentine's Day. Let's get into it. The Catholic Church recognizes a minimum of three different saints named Valentine, all of whom were martyrs. One legend states that Valentine was a priest during the 3rd century in Rome. During this time, the emperor who ruled Rome was Emperor Claudius II. Emperor Claudius decided one day that single men made better soldiers, so he outlawed marriage for young men. Valentine quickly realized that this law was not just, and continued to perform marriages anyway. When his actions were discovered, the emperor ordered his death, and so Valentine was beheaded. Another story suggests that Valentine was killed for helping Christians escape harsh prisons where they would be tortured. According to one legend, when Valentine was imprisoned, he sent the first Valentine letter himself. After falling in love with his jailer's daughter, who would visit him during this time, before he died, it is said that he wrote a letter and he signed it from your Valentine, which we all know is still an expression that we use today. Although none of these legends can be confirmed as absolute truth, the stories all seem to say that Valentine was a heroic and romantic figure. By the time we get to the Middle Ages, Valentine would become one of the most popular saints in England and France. Follow me into the next part. Welcome to part three of the history behind Valentine's Day. Let's get into it. Some believe that Valentine's Day is celebrated in the middle of February to honor St. Valentine's death. But others believe that the Christian church might have done so to Christianize the pagan celebration of Lupercalia. Lupercalia was a fertility festival that took place on February 15th. This festival was dedicated to Phanus, who is the Roman god of agriculture and also to the Roman founders named Romulus and Remus. The festival would start out with members of the Luperci, which was an order of Roman priests, who would gather at a secret cave with the Roman founders. The priests would sacrifice a goat for fertility and a dog for purification. They would remove the goat hide into strips, dip them in sacrificial blood, and roam the streets. They would then gently slap women with this goat hide. You would think that these women would run away shrieking in horror, right? Well, no, because Roman women believed that the touch of these hides would make them fertile in the coming year. Then, all of the young women would place their names on a paper and place them in a huge urn. The bachelors of the city would choose a name and be paired with that woman for the year. These pairings often ended in marriage. Lupercalia ended up being outlawed by the end of the 5th century by a man named Pope Gelasios. He also declared that February 14th would be St. Valentine's Day. Follow me into the next part. Welcome back to part 4 of the history behind Valentine's Day. Let's get into it. During the Middle Ages, the people of France and England believed that February 14th was the beginning of bird's mating season. This obviously added to the idea that the day should be made for romance. The English poet Geoffrey Chaucer was the first to record Valentine's Day as a day of romance in his 1375 poem called Parliament of Fowls. Valentine's Day greetings became popular in the Middle Ages, but written Valentine's didn't start to appear until after 1400. Now we all know who Cupid is. 
Cupid is portrayed as a mostly naked cherub that likes to launch arrows of love at unsuspecting lovers. But the Roman god Cupid also has roots in Greek mythology as the Greek god of love named Eros. There are many different accounts of his birth, making his birth parents different every time. According to sources, Eros was a handsome and immortal man. He loved to play with the emotions of gods and men, using golden arrows to incite love. Many years later was when he began to be portrayed as the mischievous chubby cherub that he is today. Valentine's Day is not only celebrated in the USA, but also in Canada, Mexico, the United Kingdom, France, and Australia. In Great Britain, Valentine's Day became popular in the 17th century. Follow me into the next part where we'll talk about the first handmade Valentine's Day cards. Welcome back to the final part of the history behind Valentine's Day. Let's get into it. By the middle of the 18th century, it was a common occurrence for friends, lovers, and families to exchange handwritten notes or tokens of affection. And by the 1900s, greeting cards replaced written letters. Fun fact, cheap postage rates also helped increase the sales of Valentine's Day cards. In the 1840s, a woman by the name of Esther Howland began selling the first mass-made Valentines in America. Howland, who affectionately became known as the mother of Valentine, made beautiful and elaborate creations with lace and ribbon. Today, according to studies by the Greeting Card Association, an estimated 145 million greeting cards are sent each year. This makes February 14th the second largest card sending holiday after Christmas. And here's one of her cards. However you decide to spend Valentine's Day, don't forget that February 14th is just another day and that any day is a good day to tell someone how much you love them and appreciate them. Just to make things clear though, I will definitely be down for that lobster dinner with champagne and chocolate covered strawberries with a side of loving. Wishing everyone a safe and blessed Valentine's Day. I love you all and don't forget, stay blessed, not stressed.